Hello everyone, this is Christian Mod Exiton Interactive, and in this video we will be implementing what Webpack calls Hot Module Replacement. Once this is done, I should be able to stop saying let's return to the browser and press refresh to see our changes, because Webpack will take care of injecting updated modules once we make changes to any of our underlying files. Of course, this is a, a time saver for us, and the approach that I'm going to take in this video is to perform a step. We'll see the error that is generated from that step, which will tell us basically what we need to do in the next step. And then that way we'll have a better understanding of what we need to do each time we implement the hot module replacement in any future uh, projects. So to do this, we'll start with going into Visual Studio. I'm going to use the magnifying glass a little bit here, maybe to make it easier to see. What I'm going to do is if the pack, if the project isn't open, I'm going to open the project and I'm going to right click on the dependencies, which will bring up the dialog and I can choose manage NuGet packages. All right. Once the manage NuGet packages uh, GUI comes up, of course, we'll want to make sure that we're on the browse. Apparently I was so eager to jump into this. Of course, as usual, you can find in the article or the link to the article uh, for this video in the description below. From that, I'm going to get the package name that we're searching for. And for our case here is the Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.SPA services. And as of the making of this video, the version uh, for this package was the 2.0 version. And once we found it, we're going to choose to install it. Give Visual Studio here a couple seconds to install and then restore the packages. It looks like that has worked. Let me go back and I think we might get away with not needing the magnifier now. Let me return to our browser and hopefully not too many longer or too many more times we're going to say this. We'll refresh. Oh no! First off, let's return to Visual Studio. It's not going to do anything. We've just implemented or we just pulled in the package. It's not actually uh, running in our project. So the first thing that we have to do is to modify our startup.cs uh, class. I'm going to open that, make this easier to read. And let's see, what we'll do is we'll go down to the configure method. Inside of that method is an if statement that says if dot is development and so if we're if the environment dot is development then do these things and that's where we want to or put the configuration for hot module replacement we want it to be in development not in production okay so let's see what we're going to use here we'll say is app dot use and it's webpack dev middleware and we once we've entered that it will of course put in the, you know, I guess we don't need the namespace yet. But what I need inside of here are some options. So I'll say new webpack dev middleware options. And what I'll want to say inside of the options is hot module replacement equals true. If I can spell. <laughs> oh, okay. So now we have saved that and we'll see here somewhere along the line here that it did uh, automatically put in the using statement for me. So you may need to add the using statement here again. It's microsoft.aspnetcore.spaservices.webpack. Okay. So with that done, I'm going to save this. I'm going to rebuild. So either you can hit F6 or go to the build menu and, set, and choose build solution. But I'll just hit F6. Once again, we'll give Visual Studio a few seconds here to work. Now it's built. Now we'll return to our browser and hit refresh. And of course, since we've rebuilt the solution, we'll wait. And by the time I'm done talking, we'll see the first error. Okay, so the first error basically is saying that one or more errors occurred. And in parentheses here, we have Webpack Dev Middleware failed. And it failed because it's missing ASP.NET-Webpack and cannot find this module 
not sure. I haven't read through here. I happen to know what that was, but uh, I don't see anything in here that tells me specifically that that's actually in a node module, so a node, pa a node package. So we'll have to use uh, NPM to install it. So let me go back to my console, which actually I have running here. Let me stop it from running. And I'm in the um, root of my project. So make sure, yeah, we have node modules here. So what we're going to do here, so it mentioned just one of the packages in that error message. So it mentions this ASP net webpack or dash webpack package. We actually need two. I mentioned that we're going to see all the errors. The error, the other package would come up later on with the exact same error saying that it needs to be installed or middleware fail because of error while loading and it'll give a name. And let me, so I'm going to do is just uh, install those packages all together here. And like I said, there's two of them. What we're going to install is the one we just saw the error for, the ASP dot, ASP.NET-Webpack. And then we need also the package webpack-hot-middleware. So we're just going to go ahead and install these two at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to copy that in, hit enter, give NPM a second to do its magic. Great. And now it's up and running. So let me go back to Visual Studio here. Well, actually, let me go to, uh, to the browser. Come on. We'll refresh. And this, you know, I'm not sure how long I spent figuring this little out, at least five minutes. You can sit here sometimes and hit this refresh button about 50 million times after you've made the change that it's asking for and it doesn't pick it up. So in those cases, what we need to do is go back to Visual Studio and build the solution. I think it has some kind of internal caching going on. Once we've built it, we'll return to the browser and then we'll hit refresh again. It will figure out that uh, we've made a change. And now we've moved on to the next error. So we've just taken care of the error of having packages that we need to install. This one now is telling us to use Webpack Dev Server, you must specify a value for the public path so this is the property which is on the output section of your webpack.config. Okay, so we're going to have to modify the webpack.config. And since we're modifying that file, if you have the console running the watch, you're going to want to stop it. And let's go into the webpack.config. And it mentioned that we need to modify the output section. So output is here. And what I'm going to do here is... Uh, um, do basically the same thing that we did in the startup.cs class. I want to just apply this whenever we're dealing with uh, development. So I'm going to go ahead and just make another if else statement here. And why it didn't put my parentheses, I don't know. We'll say environment, environment, and we'll say equals development. So whenever, oh, <laughs> it's my first day program. Else if, so if the environment is equal to development, what we want to do is to add the property onto our output object. Mm -hmm. So again, the property it was talking about, so we want output dot public path. And I'll just put the string for the moment. Okay, so the public path is if, but we'll see justification why essentially. What it wants to know is relative to the modules that go loaded into the browser, what is the path from the host to whatever folder the bundles are contained within, okay? So when we have, when we send out a bundle, it's basically the local host colon port number slash JS slash, and then just like this, since the www root folder is the content root, it of course doesn't appear in our URLs. So what we need to put in here basically is slash js slash. And you can read up, put a link in the article why it needs the two slashes, okay? But so we need to say public path equals and the string is slash js slash, okay. 
We'll return to the browser and see. It'll probably tell me to rebuild this thing again, yeah. So we'll just go back in. F6, we'll rebuild. Go back to the browser, refresh again. And give it a moment here. Found that the first time it does this thing, it does take a little bit longer than, than usual. And if we've done everything right, and even if you have done everything right, sometimes for whatever reason, I don't get the message in the console or do not get the message, so I have to you know, rebuild and refresh again. But now we have a message in here saying the HMR, so hot module replacement is connected, and that HMR bundle has, well, these are just uh, things that pop up in our console anyway when we make the bundle. So we'll, we'll ignore those. But now we think, hey, we can jump for joy that we no longer need to hit um, refresh anymore. What I'm going to do is go back to my console here. I want to start the watch again. And npm run watch. So our watch is going to make the bundles. The bundles will go into the JS folder underneath the www root folder. And then the uh, webpack will serve that to the browser. So I've got the watch running. So what I'm going to do here, sort of adjust the screen space here a bit, because I want to get that and get the browser around here at the same time. Let me close these. And actually, I forgot to change my layout. So what we'll do here is go down. And I'm going to open up the TypeScript file. And what I'm going to do, I've been doing, is changing the... So I'm in the login for our module or for our authenticator. And I'm going to change the uh, return statement for the title. So instead of login, I'm just going to put three S's here. I'm going to control S to save it. The bundle is going to be built. Uh, the watch statement is going to find the bundle. The hot module replacement module is going to find that there was a change. And if everything was going to work correctly, it would have popped up here for us, and we would have seen login with three S's on the end. Instead, we see the next, our next problem here. And we can see in the, in the browser that the bundle was being rebuilt, bundle rebuilt in a certain amount of time, checking for updates. And then these statements here are the important ones. It's basically saying, ignored an update to unaccepted module. All right. And it's just telling us that, hey, I know there was a, something to update, but it's not accepted. Okay, and the reason it's not accepted is that hot module replacement is an on accept basis. You know, we have to accept it for each of our modules. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my. Uh, actually, I don't need to stop the watch. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And I'm going to go into the app folder, and inside the app folder is our account-authenticator.site.ts file. And that, of course, contains the module definition you know, that we're using. And this is, of course, it's uh, somewhat misspoke there. Uh, our Webpack doesn't care that this is an Angular module. What it cares is that this is a module in terms of an entry point. So if we look in the Webpack dot config wherever that is we'll see that we've configured an entry point at some point yeah right here so we configured the entry point and that entry point being the account dash authenticator dot site dot ts file okay so that's why we're in this file and what we need to do is in here we need to say that we're accepting hot module replacement so I think that until I figure out anything better I'm going to do, I'm going to just put these kind of statements at the top of the, the file. And in here I'm going to say, well, let's make this full screen. So I'm going to say if, and then I want to say process env dot nope, nope, all capital equals development. So also in the uh, webpack.config, you can remember that 
some point, I think, in our plugins. Yes, once again, we did set up this node environment variable. So I'm going to check if the node environment is development. I also want to check, and I'll say ah, and, and module, and hot. So this is checking whether hot module replacement is involved. And if this is true, what I'm going to do is just say, take the module there, and then say dot accept. So I'm going to call the accept method on this module. So I'm going to save that. And everything's rebuilt. I have found that when I'm making these type of changes, that if you can, let me uh, make this half the screen again. You can watch in the browser here. If I hit F6, so if I rebuild, we'll see that we get this little message down here saying that the connection was reset for the web, uh, Webpack hot module replacement. So this is basically how to start all over again. So if something doesn't seem to be working right, you want to first try rebuilding your solution and then going over and refreshing the browser. So again, we'll give that a few seconds here to refresh. Hopefully, this will be one of the last times we have to just keep refreshing things. So let me go back into the TypeScript file and we'll see here that we do in fact have the three S's. Of course, that's just because we refreshed it. So let me remove those. I'm going to save. It's going to rebuild and now we have it disappearing without me having to refresh the browser. One, two, three, four. Let me put four of them on there. We'll refresh and then there's four S's. So in terms of the template, I mean in terms of the TypeScript class, it's working. Let me close the webpack config in the .site.ts file. And of course we do have a couple other files uh, going on. Let me, just to see, we'll go into the template file. One of the easy ones I found was just going in here and making the a second line for the title. So instead of login and then the inputs, we'll have login, login, and the inputs. So let me save that. And there's our login, login, and the inputs. Let me delete that or save. Let's go into the um, style sheet. That's the SAS uh, file. And one of the ones we have here, we set the background color at one point to be white for the inputs. Let's go ahead and change that to yellow. We'll save that. And we can see that all throughout that, we, the changes were being updated without us having to manually refresh the browser. Let me save that. And of course, the last one that I do is going to take a while. Uh, I'm not sure. Sometimes it has a little taking a few moments to update, but that certainly wasn't any longer than going back to the browser and pressing refresh, so uh, um, I have no problem with it. And I think with that, uh, we're going to end this video. It's going to be a rather short video, but it's going to have a very large impact on us in the future in saving us time from hitting the stupid refresh button. So as usual, I want to thank you for watching the video. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I will talk to you later.